Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow Chris Dalton, north of the border, Red Hind stalking on the hill. Okay, we're uh, we're on a bit of a twofold mission. Um, this afternoon we've probably got a, an hour, a couple of hours before it drops, sort of darkish. But there's a couple of things. Firstly, rifles underloaded, underloaded being basically magazines on. There's no rounds in the chamber, and it's secured on the bike. So that I have it like that, so that if we have to get off the bike for any reason, I can I can just engage around and we can stalk. So. Just to explain why the bolt's closed and the mag's on, that's the condition it's carried in there. A um, couple of things, this morning while we are out stalking, we spotted a, a hind. Um, I was kind of definitely carrying, carrying a leg, I'm not quite sure how, could have been rutting activity, could have been an old injury, but it, it's, it was speaking to the keeper up here as well, he'd seen it, so it's kind of hanging around in an area up above the, the, the sort of junipers at the top side of the wood, so it's obviously living in a broadleaf wood probably just across our back here so we're just going to go and have a look at that and just see if we can see it because obviously I'd like to um, just check that out I mean if it is injured if it's, if it's got a, a bad wound then we'll try and shoot that don't like injured animals on the hill um, so we're going to assess that and the second thing is um, idiot here dropped my stag call uh, a couple of days ago and I think it's kind of broadly in the same area which is where we recovered some uh, a stag from uh, sort of about three days ago so we're going to start through the wood. I'm actually going to retrace my steps and see if we can find my stack call as well. But the main function really this evening is to try and get to, try and get to see if we can see that hind and, and put it out of its misery if if you know if if needs be. So that's the plan.
mostly sinker, spruce planted in here, letting the broad leaves in. But the deer are coming down off the hill, which is behind us, and they're working down through the broad leaf trees. And they're tending to come through over this wall down below us. And most of the damage has been done in this like little basin, little plateau. Um, I shot three or four out of here already, but they're still coming down, so I need to shoot some more just to put them off. They're particularly coming down last thing at night and feeding at night mostly. So we're catching them first thing in the morning, and then just this sort of hour before dark. But I've got to work through the wood uh, and hopefully try and intercept maybe one or two if they're coming down while we're here. there you can see them working down off the hill down the banking coming through the rushes and they're coming through to these two or three main gaps in the wall and going onto that restock there so mostly this is taking place at night uh, you can see them starting to drift off the hill just as the light starts to go see here where the, um, the this is right on the edge of the hill now this bracken bank there's a forward track just up above it and then we've got open hill pushing up through some of the old ancient woodland uh, which is one of the reasons why it's kind of a size sign of, uh, of special interest there's some ancient junipers uh, juniper communists grow here and you can see um, the open hill just just up beyond us the deer tend to lie up on the tops and then they'll migrate down. the point in on my lost stack call. <coughs> so that is part one of the mission accomplished. Now we're going to try and find this hind. As a small group of, of, of hinds from stag in tow came up, we actually noticed that one of them was carrying an injury of some sort. I mean, the deer itself generally looked in good condition, but clearly was, was in 
sort of some sort of discomfort because it was kind of hobbling a bit I think from the front right foreleg so kind of watching that as it came up and obviously that's the one that I wanted to try and shoot and it basically followed really quite a nice line came to a point about 150 160 meters below us kind of stopped a bit and then kind of turned right to come across in front of us and when the hind stood clear on her own from the group which she did fortunately came into a position where we were able to take the shot And she Good ran girl. about 20, 30 metres and then dropped into a, a, a patch of rushes you know, to the left. Um, so really it was, a good, it was a good deer to take. Interestingly, I went forward to do the growl up. There was actually no evidence of, of any sort of an injury. Um, I couldn't see anything on the, you know, the external examination. There was no obvious signs of anything. No sort of bullet injury or, or maybe no break or something like that. But basically because there was the, the hind was limping, it's not one that I would tag and put into the, into the food chain. So that one wouldn't go to the dealer. We will keep that out and effectively we'll, I'll skin that off and have a look at that. If there's no other evidence of any problems then you know, we'll use it ourselves for, for personal consumption and clearly obviously if there's any sort of a problem at all then uh, you know, carcass will be discarded but it's not one that I would tag up and put into the, into the system. Uh, I prefer to have a look at that myself and find out just if there was anything, uh, you know, any, any sort of idea of what was causing that limp. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and do ring that bell for more videos. And if you're not a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.